<laughs> so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze 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 pepe rempe <laughs> and this is neze pepe rempe welcome back to the channel guys and in today's video i'm going to be telling you guys how i gained over 30,000 subscribers within a month period and end times 20 of my usual YouTube income. This video is going to be so impactful and insightful for everybody, especially content creators. So do well to watch till the end and share in the interest of everyone that you believe will benefit from it. Now, the major thing that necessitated me to make this video is in recent times, I've been getting a lot of messages, both privately and publicly, that YouTube is playing a trick on content creators and that the analytics are being, you know, they, they are bamboozling us. <laughs> Some people are saying that the YouTube analytics has gone haywire and suddenly they're not getting views. Even people that used to get views, the views are getting smaller, the competition is getting stiffer. The whole thing is just getting more and more difficult by the day and a lot of people are looking for answers, the way to just, you know, make it on YouTube and just get better, grow and get the desired income that they're after. So this video is going to be like a masterclass. Yes, it's like a masterclass. I'm going to be telling you everything you're probably doing wrong and I'm going to be telling you what I did, my own tricks on written or known tricks that I employ to get this tremendous growth that I myself was not even anticipating on YouTube. So, let us begin. So the first thing that a lot of YouTubers, especially the young, upcoming and growing YouTubers are doing wrong is that they are not paying attention to visibility. Mm. You cannot be in social media business without paying keen attention to visibility that is seeing you ability to make people see you and know you in simple english visibility so visibility first starts with your profile picture and your channel name okay now you're a youtuber you're cr you create content on youtube and your channel name is just a simple name and surname mm? okay uju okafo ada okoro nobody knows that you create content anybody can assume that you are just a commenter that you don't own a channel. Well, that's your choice. Although I would prefer a name that at first glance would tell that this person is a content creator. Nezeville, Neze Peperempe, Edit Corner. Something that shows that you are a creator. That alone is number one visibility. But if you want to use your name, it's okay. Oh. People in the past they have used their names. But let us not forget that the competition now is a lot more stiffer than it was in the past. Fine. So if you want to use your name, fine. But that's not my first recommendation. What about the profile picture? You see some people, they don't put any effort in getting a catchy profile picture. Do you know that just a well-made up face, a catchy profile picture can get people to click on your channel a lot more than those that don't have a catchy profile picture. So before you go and use one picture that you took when you were doing NYSC, now it's looking like something that was taken during the civil war. You are just distant. Nobody can see your face. The picture is blurry, is dull, looking like, you know, it's not catchy. You have already diverted more than 50% of the people that would ordinarily have clicked if your profile picture was inviting. So it starts from the minutest things. So please, hmm? even if it means you're going to the studio, make your hair, let it look elaborate. So when people see you, you know, it's catchy. They want to click just because of your profile picture and maybe your channel name. Another point on visibility is your ability to comment and interact with other creators. YouTube is a community that cannot be overemphasized if you are just new and upcoming. If you are established already, people know you. You don't have to go around commenting, commenting. But if you are just starting, the first way that you can get visibility is by being present in the pages and the channels of those that are already doing well. That's where people will notice you. You cannot be doing YouTube and you are struggling and you are not participating and you are not engaging with other creators. That could be as a form of commenting on their channels, collaboration. Mm, I cannot emphasize the need for collaboration. You shouldn't be forced, you shouldn't be begged for, but if there's an opportunity for you to collaborate with other creators, please grab it, it helps. Even if people don't subscribe at that point that the collaboration happened, for the fact that your face, your name, and your brand has been affiliated to this person, if a content from you, pops up on somebody's feed that have seen you with somebody else, they'll be more inclined to click than if they didn't know you at all. I kind of feel like I'm talking from my nose. Well, if I am, forgive me. 
I have a flu, a bad flu. So yes, on visibility, of course, you have to utilize all social media platforms, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, <laughs> share your video. Those that don't like it, let them block you. Mm? Share your video, advertise yourself, hype yourself, okay? And if need be, there is no harm in advertising your channel. Ads are important, especially for those whose contents are very specific, like cooking, fashion, makeup, hair, not really lifestyle. I don't think advertising a lifestyle channel will really work because nobody knows you, yeah? But if your channel is, you know, something that people search for, the content you give is something that people search for, then doing advertisements is not a bad idea. So that is that on visibility. Number two, your introduction. Your introduction matters a whole lot. I cannot overemphasize the importance. It's just like going for a debate, like listening on a debate. And one of the presenters or one of the debaters come and the first thing is, hello. Today, my subject for debate is um, how to boys are finer than girls. Uh, Egusi soup is sweeter than Ogbolo soup. They are immediately tuned off. At that first 10 seconds, you decide whether this person is one that you want to listen to or you just tune off. Now, the good part about a physical debate is that you can sit down there, but you are tuned off. But online, the tuning off means clicking out. So how your introduction starts will determine whether your audience will sit and continue listening to you or they would tune off and log off. And don't forget that when YouTube sees that your view duration is so poor, people are clicking out of your video so fast, it will affect the recommendations on that video. So when doing your introductions as a creator, be charming, be sweet, be straight to the point, and get on with it. Nobody wants an introduction of three minutes, five minutes. You have not gotten into the video. You're wasting people's time. See, eh, attention span every day is getting smaller and smaller. People have a lot of content to watch. There's a lot of things on the internet. Except you're a very known brand. Yes, you have already amassed an audience of an, or fans of people that love you, that will stay with you regardless of what you do. But if you are just struggling or you're just upcoming or you want to work on your views, please, your introduction matters. So don't waste people's time blabbing and blabbing. And, so in today's video, uh, blah, 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 blah. In today's video, when are we going to get into the today's video? When people know you, your content is always full of blabs and you are not getting into it. When your next notification pops up, they won't even be interested in clicking because they know that you are, you are, you are a usual time waster. So they will just lose, you know, confidence in what you produce. So please, always work on your introduction. In fact, even if your video is bad, just make sure that the first three minutes is interesting. That's where people will be hooked. Okay? Another thing that content creators need to work on is the duration of their videos <laughs> listen listen i'm gonna tell you the truth i'm gonna spill it the truth to you if you are a struggling creator or you are working on reviving your channel and getting views please stop producing very long videos nobody is as addicted to you yet as you wish they will be putting a 30 minutes clip or a 20 minutes clip and five minutes of the video is maybe you showing uh, food or showing your baby smiling Babies are cute, we love babies, but trust me, nobody wants to see your baby smile for five minutes. Stop overstretching the scenes. Make it brief, short, and, you know, interesting. Cut out the parts that are not necessary. Don't forget that you are not everybody's favorite yet. We are aspiring to be everybody's favorite. But in the meantime, while you are not, don't have an overbloated estimation of what you really are. You might ask, what do you recommend a perfect vlog to be? For me, within 10 to 12 minutes is okay. A struggling channel, put in a 25 minutes video oh yes you want you need the watch time but trust me it will have a detrimental and adverse effect on you because putting a 10 minutes video oh people will be like okay let me just stay since it's 10 minutes let me just watch but when they see a 25 minutes video they won't even bother they will like, i beg i can't even do it. they will just click out within one minute so don't be surprised that even that 10 minutes video can even give you a five minutes average duration than a 25 minutes video that would give you a one minute average view duration because people are already discouraged so they just click out fast so watch the length and the duration of your videos. So I'm going to go right into what I did as a person to get my channel to experience that kind of growth. Only a few months back, I was on 20 something thousand subscribers. I'm talking about my main channel, Nezeville, not this second channel that I just opened, Neze Pepe Rempe, which by the grace of God is also doing well. And gri -gri -gri, we have qualified for monetization. With just three videos on our channel, we have qualified for monetization and that's a big deal that's a good fit so i'm talking about the growth i experienced on nezerville my main channel and on that channel this year when i started not even this year like almost in the middle of the year i was on 20 something thousand subscribers and i was telling myself that oh my dream 
will be even if it's 40,000 by the end of the year I'll be so grateful to God but within a month's period I think that was between within April to May or was it May to June I'll I might put my analytics right up on the screen as I speak I went from 20 something thousand subscribers to 60 something thousand right now we're on 65,000 subscribers and <laughs> I didn't see that coming. I didn't. I wasn't expecting it. So let me tell you a little about what I did, what worked for me. Okay. And not only did I experience that growth on the subscriber count, I also experienced a surge in my income slash revenue. That even when I slowed down, of course, you guys know that at the point I stopped creating that much. I was like releasing two videos in a month, three videos in a month, because I needed to handle some personal issues. I was still making a good four figure. So let me tell you how I did that. One, I streamlined my channel, redirected my channel and refocused my channel. So before on Netherville, all sorts of content was put up there and my analytics was crazy because YouTube didn't know who to recommend my videos to. Today I'm doing a cooking video, tomorrow I'm doing a vlog, next tomorrow I'm talking about law and the next I'm talking about politics. So the recommendations were going to people that do not really need them and it was affecting my views badly. So I made a decision on that channel to streamline my content and I made it a reaction channel, more like law and reaction channel. So I was only talking about discussing social issues and you know, stuff like that, trends. That's what that channel is about. And I moved all my personal life to this channel and the channel got so streamlined. When I release a video, YouTube recommends it to the set of people that needs it. Not before that YouTube will be recommending my videos to people that don't need it. Recommending politics videos to people that want to watch me and my mother-in-law and there's no interest and I'm wondering what's going on? Subscribers are not coming. Subscribers were so slow. 21, I was inching, inching. The revenue was, you know, wasn't that fantastic. But when I streamlined my channel and refocused, rebranded, carved a niche for myself, that is it, niching down, oh my God, it's so important. I wish I had realized and done it sooner. What annoys me sometimes is because when I started out on my channel on YouTube, this was what I wanted to do, what I'm doing right now on Inezebel, like talking, social, I didn't then going into this private life thing. Well, I just came and I saw that, oh, people are doing it, it's looking good, and I joined. If I had stayed true to my course, ha, my channel would have taken off long time ago, but better late than never, right? Good, so the first thing I did was niching down and focusing my channel to one lane. Good. So I identified my strengths and what stood me out as a person. See, eh? everybody has their strengths. Everybody has what makes them unique, what stands them out. But sometimes we're just afraid. We don't know whether people would like it. We don't know whether it will interest people. We don't know whether it will attract um, audience. But trust me, if you stay true to your course and stay true to your unique potential, you would attract your own crowd. And you, and you just might be surprised that your crowd is a lot, lot more than you would expect. So what were my strengths? One, I'm a lawyer. I have a very deep, critical and analytic mind. Right from when I was a child, I can dissect an issue and talk about it. I used to write books. So storytelling it has always been my passion. It has always been my gift right from when I was a little girl. And being a lawyer and having knowledge of what the law says about all these social issues was also a strength for me. So I sat down and had a deep reflection. What is that thing that I have that I don't see a lot of people have on YouTube? I thought to myself, how many YouTubers have I seen dressed like a lawyer, robed, and talking about social issue, and not just coming as gossip or pigeon English, hey, this one don't happen, no, which is interesting, no issues with that. But there are some people that would want to listen to, you know, the pragmatic and, you know, logical angle, not just the gossip angle. And I thought to myself, there are not a lot of people doing this. I, for one, honestly, I wouldn't go to a pigeon channel that is just blabbing, wasting my time, no head, no tail, no sequence, no progression of story. Just gossiping, hey, this one happened. I'm not learning anything, I'm not getting anything. No facts, just gossip. I will not go to that channel to watch. And I know that there's some people like me too that would want factual stories. Someone that can convey a message well. I said, I said, not a lot of people are doing this. So this is a unique feature. This is a unique selling point for me. Let's delve into it, jump into it. And I started and I did. I got my robe and gown, I dressed like a lawyer. I researched. Oh God, before I bring out any topic, because I know people will be depending on me to get the facts. So I can't just come and deceive people because I want to get views. I'll research, spend the night researching. Even if I have to pay for that information, I don't mind. I'll pay, go to different news sites, get the concrete information, then piece the story up together in a sweet way, sweet fashion, with good English and 
come and spill it out and God, people were loving it. So that is another thing I did. Think to yourself, what is that thing that you can do that is different from what the whole crowd is doing? Everybody has it. It's just left for you to identify and utilize it. And that was what I did. And trust me, guys, it's paying off so much that even when I'm still on the news, maybe because the news broke out during um, a weekday and I'm going to work, I don't shoot during the weekdays. And by weekends, the news is already stale. People will still be waiting for me because they want to hear what Barisa Neze has to say about that topic. So even when I release a video of a gist that happened three weeks ago, tens of thousands of people are still watching because I have carved that unique selling point for myself. Three, I was consistent. When I took to this new niche, luckily for me, as though God just planned everything, I was on vacation. I think I was like, was it April? Was it May? I'll check. I think April. I was on vacation. So I started bombarding, bombarding. When I release today on Animacoli, I'll release tomorrow on Osinachi, I'll release next tomorrow on um, Cora, I'll release another one on Legal every day, two, two days. So as people were coming, I was giving them more. I was trying, I was sustaining them, retaining them. If I wasn't on vacation, it would have not been possible. That's why I said it was just God's plan that when my channel took off, I was on vacation. So I had time to, you know, bombard. Consistency is very key, especially when you want to revive your channel. When you identify that you have gotten the audience, that at least that, this audience that are watching you, do not give any space. Find out what they want and start creating similar contents and start pushing. YouTube will identify the traffic on your channel and they'll keep promoting it. Don't forget that what they want also are the views and the retention. So if you're giving it to them, they would give it to you. Again, which I have already sort of mentioned is that I carved a niche for myself. I think it's similar to point number two. So I wasn't just jack of all trades and master of none. I became focused on what my channel was about. Or what my channel is about and that has really helped me see guys this video has gotten long i, I didn't want this video to be long don't worry very soon <laughs> i'm going to do some sort of master class and i'm going to spill 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 and reveal a lot more including the tricks thumbnail title what i did on the background i'm going to reveal all of that in a master class which i don't know when it's going to happen yet but if you're looking forward to that or if you will participate in my master class if i have one drop in the comment section because i have a lot of knowledge that i would like to pass to you guys that would help you too because if we all win we all stay winning and that's the plan so guys thank you so much for watching let me just bring this video to an end at least for now let me know what your experience on youtube has been like has it been a roller coaster has it met your expectation or is it below your expectations what do you think is the reason why a lot of creators now are struggling even creators that did so well last year two years ago this year it just seems like you know Things are not working anymore. What do you think is the reason? Let me know in the comment section. Which of these points did I speak on that resonates with you and which of them do you not agree with? Let us know all of that in the comments. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to Neze Pepe Rempe. <laughs> Our vlog channel, not just vlog, um, personal channel. Let me just put it there with personal and family channel. Turn on your notification bells and stay glued for more. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, Neze, Neze Pepe Rempe. <laughs> and this is Neze Real. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs>